I'm just playing around and getting some old scrapped MacBook boards and getting the SPI ROMs off them and reading the code and storing it on my computer. I thought I'd show you that. So I've already done about, I don't know, four or five chips, I think, 44, I think. Anyway, this one here is a 3115, A23115, and there's the SPI ROM right in that corner there. So I've got to take this SPI ROM off. This is the same one was used on some of the other machines as well, it's used the same chip. Um, I've already looked up the number for it, just to start I'm not starting with. And um, you can see here I've got a uh, T08662 Plus, is actually the one I've got. Right, this thing here. Pretty good little programmer, very handy. And I'm um, using this with uh, one of these clampsable header or clipsable pin clamps. Right, so it's not, this is way bigger than chip, but it doesn't matter. So, um, I'm going to desolder this chip, drop it in here, and I'll show you the screen. We'll read the screen and um, read the chip and show you what data we get off it. Then I'm going to say that data is an original SPI ROM content. Put the chip back on again, put it back into my stock of spare boards or parts boards. And the reason I'm doing this is that sometimes you don't quite know what you're going to need. One day you may need to program a chip and you don't have a ROM. Um, you probably can find them online, but I thought, well, I'll create my own little database of them, and whilst I've got these boards, I'll just put them together. It's not that much of a big deal. Alright, let's start getting, getting this chip off here. Got to be careful not to burn, burn the bench because it's close to the edge of the board. So I'm going to do it like this. So pin one is over here, that corner. Okay, you can see the dot there, pin one. So I've got to turn the chip around and put it into the programmer. Okay, all right, make sure it's aligned up properly. Got oh, stuck to it somewhere. Go. Right, let's read this thing. Right, there we go. So it's now find the chip. So what this has got, it's got a option here at the top, which I'll show you. Flash detect, right? 25 series flash detect. So we get this software actually allows you to just hook it up and hook detect. Oh, pin error. Hmm, that's not right. Okay. Let me rethink this. Let me check the connections. So rather annoyingly, that um, this is the only 3 by one 5 board I've got which has got an SPI ROM on it and it looks like this one's bad. All the other ones have got no chips on. So that's um, kind of irritating really. So I can't show you that particular board. So what I might do is grab one of the other boards out and just do a read of that one just to show you what I've done. Um, so you can actually see it and I'll show you one I've already done already. Okay, here's a different board. This board is a 2914. So we'll take the chip off this one. I'll show you the whole process, shall I? And then we'll do it from this one instead. This one should work. Move this out of the way. Let's have a bit of the noise. Pin one is over here. Right. Put the computer down here so you can see it. And we'll try and do an auto detect on this one. Oh, I don't put a program off the disk. Where's the mouse gone? There it is. Detect. 
Now it's a 6406 uh, 648 sorry this one here that one there yeah just like that one tools uh, device read read the chip And the chip is red. So let's look at the chip contents. Now, the thing you usually want to do with these chips, so if you're actually reading them, like if you look towards the end of the code here, you can see here information about the device. At least I believe that's what this is. I think that is the device serial number just here. Okay. I think this board's got a sticker on it, usually they're gone. It's got a partial sticker on it. So can I match any of that numbers are up to that? Nah, it's mostly ripped off. Um, o -O, I can see two O no, it's two triple zero B D I can see on a sticker just here. Just over there. And on the screen there you can actually see two triple zero B D. So that code there is like the serial number of the board. Okay, so if you need to change that, that's where it is. It's in the code there. All right. Now the thing that people normally want on these is to grab the um, firmware um, EFI password. Right. So if I do a, a find on this, you want dollar sign SVS. Can be closer. All right. Dollar sign SVS in ASCII. Oh god, clicking the wrong button doesn't help, does it? Alright. Right, next. And there it is here. Okay, so in this case that's where it's located. Now I've seen different tutorials. Some will say just find that protection there with that section there and go down to the next FF block, which is down here, and just replace a whole lot of Fs. Alright, so you're replacing all the data with blank data. I've also seen another one say go seven lines down. So one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and after that you do FS. But yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm not quite sure why there's a difference. Maybe someone that knows out there can actually elaborate on that a bit more. I've never actually done this password reset thing. I've never come across a situation I needed to. But apparently that's where it is. You just look for that dollar uh, SVS, and you delete that and everything following it. So all the way down to that, you would make all that FF. You can use HXD to do that apparently, it's just like a freeware you know, open source thing which you can use to edit hex files. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to put the chip back on the parts board and call it a day. Hope if you found it interesting, give a thumbs up and subscribe, that sort of stuff. Share the video if you think people might be interested in this. And I'll catch you later. Bye. So thank you very much to my Patreon supporters, um, much appreciated. If you're interested in supporting me to help me buy items for mailbag or projects to work on, you know, bits of test equipment to repair, that kind of thing, any money goes goes towards that is helpful because it is expensive buying test equipment to do repairs on, especially if I'm not actually going to be using it that much or it's something I could do without. Or, you know, as in most cases, you can do without things. So having a Patreon supporters and people that donate to me via PayPal is, is very helpful. So if you're interested in helping support me and um, you know contribute to the channel, um, then please check out my Patreon page, my PayPal donation options, which are down in the description down there. Click on the Show More tab, which is down there. So um, thank you very much for not supporting me. I enjoy making videos, enjoy showing what I'm playing around with. It was just originally I was going to video bits of what I'm doing at the time. I was, you know, if I'm working on something, I'll do a video of that and slap it up which was going to be rather random and erratic and I've ended up basically turning my life into doing YouTube videos and buying things and trying to create content to keep you guys entertained yeah if you want to support me that's great because um, that would certainly be appreciated because this is an expensive hobby catch you later thanks for watching click the bell icon bye if you haven't seen my previous stuff then make sure you have a look I've got hundreds of them like 644 videos I've done so far 
So go and check them out. Seeing a variety there. Go back and look at the back catalog. Pages and pages of them. Pages of playlists as well. All these things too. Loads of them. Go and check them out. Make sure you go and watch more stuff. Watch more. Watch more. Watch more.